Hey guys, this is Julian, and today we're gonna hop into Ableton Live and check out the project file for one of my newest singles, Virtual Assistants. If you haven't heard the track already, make sure to check out the link in the video description below to do so before you watch this video. Without any further ado, let's hop into Ableton and let's get started. Hey guys, so now we are in Ableton. On a side note, let me know if you like this kind of like green screen me in the bottom right hand corner uh, layout. Um, I just got a green screen and I got a lighting kit, so um, I wanted to give this a go. Today we are looking into my latest single, Virtual Assistance. Um, it's kind of an electro tune, kind of 2012, 2010 or 11 esque. And we're just going to hop right into it because I'm assuming you've heard the track before and um, we'll go into it. I'm trying to keep this video short and um, we're going to go over the intro, the last drop, and maybe a little bit of this breakdown here. So the first thing we have is the kick. Um, if we listen to the intro, actually, let's just play it aloud first. Let me turn that down. So you'll notice that there's a few elements to that intro. Um, and then in the latter half of it, we have this. So the first element, again, is that kick drum. Um, we have uh, kick two here. I'm not going to go too in-depth on the sound uh, design. It's a very deep kick. If you want to check out my review of kick two, which is one of my favorites since nowadays, I don't use kick drums anymore. Um, check out the link in the upper right hand corner and um, you can check out that review I did of kick two. Um, but for now we're just going to roll with that kick. Uh, the next drum is obviously the clap here. Um, this is comprised of two claps. Uh, we have this clap, or I'm sorry, this clap and this snare. The snare is kind of shortened off a little bit, um, kind of creates a very dead mousey vibe, uh, very shortened samples. We have a little bit of EQ on it and we have a filter that cuts off itself or cuts the, the top end off of the clap and snare in the build ups. You'll notice that here. Cool. Two tracks down. Next thing we have is the hat, um, which it comes in at the chorus sections. Um, as you can hear, it's panned hard right. Well, not hard right, but but soft right. 10% uh, 10, 10 right, uh, actually. Just a default uh, Leviathan sample um, turned down in the mix. We have this metal sound, which is kind of signature to the track, so we'll get to that in a little bit. Um, but first, let's actually go back into the intro here and actually listen to that bass line. Now, the bass of this track is divided into two pieces. There's a triplet kind of feeling bass line. It's an eighth note triplet um, bass line, which is in the intro. It's kind of that wonky sound. Um, whereas the the regular bass line is that um and we're going to actually break this down let's actually go into the the triplet one first because that's the intro i'm going to solo that bass for you cool so that is the bass line this bass is comprised of two pieces, the groan bass, which is that higher ended kind of phasing back and forth between the ear sound, and a basic sub layer. So the sub is pretty self evident, um, not much going on with that, but we're going to go into the uh, groaning bass a little bit more in depth. Um, the It's just a basic pulse width wave, um, we have a uh, hyper di dimension on it, hyper's off currently. What's really creating the sound that you hear is this uh, eighth note triplet uh, LFO controlling the drive of the sinefold distortion or sinfold, however you want to say it. That's going into a flanger or flanger, however you want to say it, um, and that's creating that really phased out kind of wonky feeling to that bass line because you're getting that interesting triplet feel 
as well as that dimension and and a little bit of distortion that is um, being you know modulated on that triplet feel, along with a little bit of flanger, excuse me, which is you know putting it on the atmosphere a little bit. And we have a reverb that is automated into the, the the breaks, which kind of softens the tone a little bit and puts it in the background a little bit more for when those buildups happen. It kind of pushes the bass into the background, and then when it drops, it comes back really hard with the other bass. So that is the bass line to the intro section. Let's hop into the lead. That's the really cool lead you hear in the intro and the buildups. Now I have this title as phase lead because I actually have a frequency modulated and feedback modulated phaser on this lead. That's what's making it kind of around you. It, it kind of feels more deep than just a regular sound. And I also have a little bit of auto pan, uh, actually a 35% amount auto pan at a randomized rate. It's not a, a rhythmic rate, it's a frequency rate. It's actually going at 5.50 hertz. And we have a uh, basic sound here. It's a saw wave with a seven percent or seven amount unison. We have a hyper dimension again to create that depth of that sound. This song is all about creating that kind of width to the the basses, but at the same time keeping them very monoized. Um, that's what creates that really wonky effect. There's no heavy reverb on any of the basses or on anything for that matter, but they feel really wide and genuine. Uh, it's very similar to producers like No Mana. He keeps his sense very dry, and when he uses reverb, it kind of, um, you know, creates a sense of depth that wasn't there before. Because when you have reverb on everything, nothing has reverb on it in that sense. That um, contrast is really what sells your mix. So enough blabbling. Let's get back to that lead. We have a down sample on that lead. That's what's creating that really kind of 8-bit crust effect. <laughs> And then from that down sample, we drive it into another filter, which is then modulated by envelope 2. That is our lead. Down here, we have two risers. Um, we're going to just solo them both together just to save a little bit of time. One is a customary saw wave riser. Um, you know, you've heard it a million times. Um, that's just getting a little bit of pan there, as you can see in the bottom here. And then we have a little bit of a width modulation, which is going super duper wide in the stereo field, 200% down to 100%, um, or actually 0% um, when it hits the, the top of its rise. Um, and then we have a gain modulation turning it up and down um, in some places, actually cutting it out completely. I guess I could have actually modulated the mute button, but I guess I didn't realize that or didn't think of it when I did this. Um, that's actually just a cut, uh, just so that it doesn't resonate out and I want it to be completely silent when those iPhone samples come in. We're gonna get to those in a minute. That's a really cool feature. But um, again, the riser is just a saw wave at seven uh, unison. It's a rising effect. We have the rise here. Um, what it's doing is it's actually changing the detune amount and actually um, yeah, the detune amount and the reverb amount as this this knob moves, and that's creating this kind of it, it, far away into a close sounding um, rise. And then, as you can hear, there's the other element to that riser, which is this rise with kick. This is a little bit more interesting. It's kind of like a professional griefer style riser that he uses in the chorus, the Dead Mouse, that is, um, and. Um, essentially what we're doing is we're using a very spectral uh, waveform here excuse Instagram screw Instagram um, we're using a spectral waveform and we're using a high unison amount and um, essentially we are modulating that detune as well as modulating the rise over time and now what this is doing is it's kind of spreading out as it gets higher and then it's also detuning itself a little bit so it kind of creates an even more wonky effect um, as it rises What's creating that really cool eh, 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 is this this gate we have here applied to the synth, as you can see. Um, we actually have a channel above the a regular riser here called Ghost for Rise. And this is actually just straight quarter notes for the most part, and then in some cases eighth notes, that is sending uh, send-only data to that rise. And that's what's uh, triggering the gate. 
so we have this this cool gated effect if we turned off the gate it would lose all of its um, feeling the gate is what's giving it that really cool um, sound and then of course we can solo the white noise with it because white noise is very rudimentary um, just a high pass white noise with a filter on it generated by serum we got a little bit of phaser on it and a little bit of reverb so um, this is the build up let's just actually listen to this drum build up here So the other element to this uh, this kind of uh, pre-chorus thing is this pad, and this is just a kind of saw wave pad, very rudimentary, a little bit of tube and a little bit of chorus on it to create that atmosphere. And it's just rising and opening that cutoff over time. Now the cool thing about this uh, really this end of bar melody here is that every instrument in the entire tune plays this this bar whenever it approaches. Um, or whatever, whenever they are playing in that particular chorus. This is a pre-chorus. Um, it has a slightly altered version to the chorus version. We're going to get into that in a minute. That is this version here. That's why it's brown and purple. Um, but um, let's just actually listen to that melody. And that's the fully open sawtooth pad. But we have that square wave layered under it, which is the coolest sound in the track. <coughs> Excuse me. And that is this sound. Then leading into that we have this cool square fade, which is essentially the first note of that square pad that you just heard. Um, played with reverb, reversed, and then uh, driven into itself so you get this sound. Ends off on this really cool Prida kind of sound. Um, zoom in right here this is a clap as you can hear let's just solo the clap and that's kind of like a Wolfgangy clap and then the uh, sample right in front of it is the same clap but in reverse and with the transient in the front cut off so that you get this white noise fade into that thwack and this is actually five decibels or about five four point eight five decibels lower than the clap itself and then we have the snare underneath that, which was originally a Prida, that's why it's called Prida. But I, I wanted a more Wolfgangy kind of sound, so I went with this little tight snare. So let's solo these together and we get this, which is kind of a very Wolfgangy uh, transitionary clap. <clears throat> so those are those. Um, let's actually hop into the drop now. That's an interesting part. We're going to actually skip to the last drop because. Um, the other drops are the same drop just with less elements and the last drop is just the the other drops in the song with all the elements together so we're just going to listen to it and um, uh, go through it <laughs> It might sound a little bit daunting at first, but um, I swear to you, it's very, very simple. Um, we have the bass line here. Um, the bass line, the main bass, as I was saying, there's two basses in this track, um, is composed of three uh, main elements. We have this mid-tone bass here, which is actually just a, a saw wave and a sine wave doing a mid-tone kind of pluck on the, the beat or off the beat if you will, it's kind of a syncopation. And then we have the bouncing bass, which is the really interesting one. It's kind of phased in a way. And what's creating that cool effect is the use of dimension and hyper, as well as a distortion. So we're running a distortion after the hyper to kind of catch all of that dimension and it kind of pushes it into this, this crushed sound. We're then compressing it, and then um, we are going to a kick uh, side chain. And then we have the sub layer, of course, which is just doing sub. Now, all three of those together sound like this. And that's super duper sick. 
the kind of um, signature sound of the entire track is this falling percussion and rising percussion effect. It's kind of like keys falling. Now this sample is actually from my Seldom Sounds sample pack. Um, if you guys don't follow Seldom Sounds, essentially we go on locations and record uh, Foley packs uh, based on the real world and you know we, we get samples from places that you may have not have ever heard. Um, we actually for this pack, this sample is actually from a pack called Railway. We went to a railway and recorded some, some samples there. And this is actually a falling metal sound. I should give this a listen. We kind of dropped a metal pole on the rocks or something, and then this is the sound it created. It's kind of a two transient sound. There's this little bit um, of a transient here, and that creates that kind of shuffled effect you hear. Fortunate enough to have that. <coughs> and then, of course, it has reverb on it, and then it has a ping pong delay at a very small amount. What's creating that uh, fading percussive effect is this. Um, pitch bend automation here. I just used the MIDI control pitch bend, the default one. And this is the same type of sound that you would hear, or this is the same type of automation that you would create using a pitch modulation wheel on a keyboard. I just drew in a line here. The blue ones on the, the timeline, as you can see, represent the falling uh, samples, and then the green ones represent the rising samples. The next sound we have is the lead throughout the chorus. Um, let's give that a play. So this is a very interesting sound. Um, we have a saw wave doing a pluck synth, basic as it gets. Um, and then we have it running into a diode with a high drive, a decent amount of phase low rate phaser so we, it's not blatantly obvious but enough so that it's pushing out um, into that width zone that we were trying to get into earlier. Um, the reverb, uh, just a little bit, a little touch in the chorus kind of helps. And then we have all of this going back into another filter which is modulated by envelope 3. And that's actually not doing very much, I think it was more of an experimentation thing. As you can see the envelope is flat. Now. Um, What's creating that really cool gliding effect in the notes is actually a automation of port time or portamento. Um, we can kind of go into that here and you can visualize exactly what's going on down here, actually down here and on the screen there. And this only happens in the latter two choruses, but um, it kind of creates this glide effect between the notes at some point. So let's give it a listen. <laughs> that's kind of like a nice way to touch back to that um, uh, wonky feeling in the beginning because it kind of still gives that wonky feeling. The last automation of this particular um, synth is this one which is macro one which creates that really cool kind of 8-bit um, I guess glitchy sound like a an error sound at the end of those bars which this is controlling the detune of the first oscillator as well as the cutoff of the filter which is creating this sound because it opens up all the way and goes super detune like it's an error okay so let's hop into the the coolest part of the track IMO in my opinion um, the cool little drop thing at the end of every chorus um, that that really harmonic like melodic thing let's give it a play uh, as a whole and then we'll break it down so there's some familiar elements here we have the same bass it's just playing a different melody um, this is kind of an alteration melody to that original square uh, melody that you hear in the beginning in the first pre-chorus. Um, as you can see here, this is that square I was talking about. Um, this is the original melody. But the post-drop melody sounds like this. And that kind of gives it a little bit more motion, I think. Same rules apply here. We have that square fade into that square wave. Um, we have this new pad introduced here, which is kind of like a super saw. 
Um, very basic sound design, square or saw wave, dimension again, reverb, etc. And that's cool. And then we have this 8-bit ARP, which is doing the exact same melody, just arpeggiated. Let's give that a solo. This is a very cool sound. This is literally an 8-bit, um, or I'm sorry, a square wave with a diode on it. Cool. And then, as I said before, on these parts, all of the... the, the melodic elements in the song do the exact same melody um, at the same time. So if we solo all of the melodic elements here, we have the bass line, the 8-bit sound at the end of the bar, the end of bar pad, the square fade, and the square, I believe that's it. Um, yep, that's it. Um, we can actually hear all those harmonics together. Cool. And that is essentially all it is for the main melodic elements. The only thing we have left to cover is the cool um, effects that I use in the tune. With the exception of uh, white noise, which is very basic, we have some really cool stuff here. Um, we have those vocal samples, which is an interesting story. I was actually browsing YouTube one time, and I found this uh, scammer video. It's a, a scam call one of those scam calls where the guy gets a call from some foreign country and it's ridiculous but this sample was so ridiculous in fact that I had to use it in a tune and um, I finally found a use for it so let's give this thing a listen just soloed my name is Jack uh, you'll be taken to the legal courthouse you'll be put down behind the bars and the cops will be hitting you with a long stake at the back of you they will be hitting at your leg and they will be putting you behind the bars so needless to say it made it into the track the other effect that's related to this is the phone sound dip I used the, the, the phone ring from the beginning of this as you can hear I used that here um, and that's this, but I actually pitched it down over time. Let's actually open that audio file up and you can see I pitched it down with that same clip transposition modulation. And then paired with the You've Got Mail sample, everybody loves from AOL back in the day, uh, minus the mail of course, and um, You've Got um, You've Got and then it dips that sound, that phone ringing sound you got and then it drops back into the the chorus those are the main sounds here uh, we also have a dial-up tone which kind of adds a lot IMO um, and what I did was I actually played the dial-up sound up until the point where it made that very cool almost white noise digital white noise like computerized white noise effect and then I looped that over and over and I created this clip here and then I actually modulated that with a filter cutoff similar to a white noise so let's just give this a play so you can hear it Cool. Um, and then the only other sounds that I have left to cover are the iPhone samples, which are the most iconic samples in the song. Um, and as I said before, there's like there's gain utility on a lot of the channels. I think this might be one of them. I'm not sure. But I digress. That they're muting everything um, when these samples come on. As you can see, there's little breaks. Um, essentially, I want it to be like you got a text mid-song uh, just to F with people. And it delivered. A lot of people were telling me how, how it got them the first time. But I did that um, here. Let's give this a listen. It's actually not a good place. Let's do this part. The cops will be hitting you with a long stake at the back of you. They'll be hitting and that's your obviously leg. the text received or text send sound. I can't. I can never remember the difference. That's the mail send, and this is the ping. Same one I use at the end, the, the send, or the received ping. So there's this breakdown alteration to that lead, but other than that, this is a um, 
That's essentially everything in the track. And again, I'm modulating that detune and cutoff filter there. So that is virtual assistance in a nutshell. I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, kind of in-depth breakdown of the tune. If you guys haven't already, download the tune. It's free on Artist Union, or you can pick it up on iTunes or any of your favorite stores. I make a video every Wednesday and Friday, so make sure to subscribe for future updates. You can go ahead and click the little bell too if you want notifications on. I am Julian of Julian Gray Media. I hope you enjoyed this video and track and stuff. And I will talk to you guys next time. Bye-bye.